All right, so in this video, we're going to be talking about uh, the poems themselves. I'm not going to read the poems all the way through. I'm going to let you read them on your own. Um, but I'm going to give you kind of an overview of some things I want you to be thinking about, um, some things that might, might make it easier to read and some things that you might focus on. So let's start with the first one, persimmons. Again, remember, this is the, the only one where you're going to have to post two questions, right, uh, and, uh, and respond to two questions. That's because, as you can see, this is a longish poem. It goes on to three pages. Um, so uh, um, uh, the other one's a lot shorter, and so I only gave you one question. Uh, so it's Persimmons, the poet is Lee Young Lee. Um, and so let's go through a couple of things here. I'll just uh, uh, read through uh, uh, part of it and then point out some things that I want you to focus on. So it begins, in sixth grade, Mrs. Walker slapped the back of my head and made me stand in the corner for not knowing the difference between persimmon and precision. Um, and let's just stop right there. One of the things that you'll you might figure out as we go through this, but I'm just going to tell you, um, is that one of the reasons he can't tell the difference between persimmon and precision uh, is that he is learning English as a second language. He doesn't know English that well. Um, and so those two words sound alike. And this idea of words sounding the same is going to come up later on. And there are other places where, you're, where you will realize um, uh, that uh, uh, that he just that he learned English as a child. Um, uh, so uh, uh, and then we talk about a persimmon. A persimmon is a fruit. Uh, you can Google that and look up and see what it looks like if you haven't seen one before. Um, uh, and uh, um, and so that's kind of what you need to, to know about that. And then he's going to talk about what it's like to peel and eat a persimmon and all of that. And one of the things to always keep in mind is that if we are talking about something, especially if have a title about a poem or a story, that's something that's very ordinary. Persimmons, it's a fruit, right? It's like saying apples, right? Bananas. Um, if you're going to have a, a poem that's going to be titled that, you're probably using that fruit or whatever it is that you might be talking about. If you want to, you know, uh, um, if you want to talk about, you know, lightning bugs uh, or butterflies, whatever it is, we're probably going to be using those to really talk about something else because those things are not important on their own. So just by looking at this title, we can realize that, okay, he's talking about persimmons, but let's just keep in mind that the persimmons may not be uh, in and of themselves the most important thing to discuss here. We may be using the persimmons as a metaphor to talk about something else. What is that potentially? Uh, so uh, just keep that in mind as we go through. So that's what uh, uh, persimmons can, might be used, the metaphor, uh, used as a metaphor. He's just learning to speak English. Um, and then um, I'm going to draw your attention to this. I, I bring this up in some ways in the uh, uh, um, in the instructions for the discussion board, but it goes here. Donna undresses. Her white stu her stomach is white in the yard, dewy and shivering with crickets. We lie naked, face up, face down. I teach her Chinese. So first of all, I teach her Chinese. But that's where partly where we get the idea that um, uh, he uh, spoke another language. He spoke Chinese. Uh, uh, crickets, choo choo. Do I forgotten? See, he's forgotten the language, right? Which might have something to do with what we can say up here that um, he does know the difference when he's young. He doesn't know the difference between persimmon and precision because he's just learning to speak English. But when we get down here, he's forgotten his Chinese. So kind of keep that in mind. But one of the things I want to keep in mind is how come we're suddenly out in the yard with Dono? What is happening here? Um, and so uh, um, uh, that's a good question, um, and that's the kind of thing that you might be talking about in your, uh, um, uh, in, your in the discussion board. Um, and he's going to talk about other things that get into trouble, fight and fright, ren and yarn, right, other words that are different. We might think about how that all fits together. Miss Walker comes back, and she brings a persimmon to class so that everybody can taste it, a Chinese apple. Um, and so see what, uh, again, uh, read through that and think about how that might fit into the larger idea in the poem. Uh, and then um, later on in the cellar, once in a cellar, I found two, two persimmons wrapped in newspaper, uh, forgotten and not yet right. Um, and so he more talk about persimmons. And then here, finally understanding he was going blind. So his father's going blind. My father sat up all night waiting for a song, a ghost. I gave him the persimmons. Uh, 
and we might think about why we're talking about his father going blind. Uh, as I mentioned in the um, directions, uh, I asked things, we said that he's blind, uh, but it also says that uh, um, he says things uh, under some blankets. I find a box. Inside the box, I find three scroll, scrolls. Scrolls are like rolled up um, paper or fabric. Uh, and beside him, I untied three paintings by my father right? Um, and uh, the father paints, uh, and the father talks about how these I painted blind. He painted them blind. I mentioned that. So what does we think about somebody who paints these things blind? Um, so uh, go through and just think about what all this might mean. It's a lot of stuff going on in this poem. You should have a lot of questions. Um, ask those questions. Uh, um, try and respond to somebody else's questions. Come back and look at the replies. Look at my replies, because I'm going to get in there and I'm going to uh, make some comments. Uh, and uh, um, I just want to kind of throw you into this and see what you might come up with, see what ideas you might have to come up with. Again, one of the things maybe to keep in mind about all this is that um, this uh, semester we're talking about um, uh, uh, people coming uh, to the United States from other countries and kind of assimilating and uh, uh, what does that potentially mean here? And so what does it mean when he's learning how to speak uh, English and that he forgets his Chinese and how does all that relate to the persimmons? So that's a little bit about uh, persimmons. The next one I want to get to is dot head. Uh, dot head is a slur that people might use, uh, um, something that's uh, not very polite at all, uh, a racist slur on some level about uh, um, um, people who are, are of Indian descent. Uh, we're talking uh, uh, about um, wearing um, a, a bindi or some other kind of uh, adornment on the forehead. And so that dot head is going to be a slur that we're going to use in that case. Um, and so here is somebody who's going to be talking about, says, yes, my mother wears a dot um, uh, on her forehead. And he's, uh, he says, I know they said uh, third eye in class, uh, but it's not an eye eye like that, right? Uh, and so talking about uh, the dot that his mother wears uh, on his forehead. And then we can be thinking about some of the um, metaphors that we might use in here. We talk in here, I, I mentioned down at the bottom here, I've got some explanation about Chernobyl baby, and I explain what that is. So uh, a dot that opens on your forehead like some Chernobyl baby. Um, so uh, what's happening with this uh, simile here? What does this potentially mean? Um, uh, and uh, um, uh, going through and thinking about the different ways in which we might be using different kinds of uh, metaphors here. So go through and uh, look at this poem. It's about, again, about uh, this kid who's being made fun of because uh, of his mother. Uh, and think about what are some of the elements that we see here that are helping us understand that. And again, make sure that you look at the explanations that I have at the bottom uh, that explain some of the specific terms here. Um, and then if we want to go to of the threads that connect the stars, um, you can notice right here that within this we've already got um, uh, metaphors in the, um, in the title. Um, because we're talking about threads that connect stars. Well, you can't connect the stars with threads. We can't even get to the stars. So how would they be connected by threads? That doesn't make any sense in the real world. Uh, and whenever, whenever we have something that doesn't make sense in the real world, uh, then we are going to be talking about something that is going to be metaphorical. So what are the stars here? What do the stars potentially represent? Uh, and what do, do we want to say about those threads that connect the stars? Uh, and so we have here, he's saying, did you ever see stars, asked my father with a cackle. He was not speaking of the heavens, but the white flash in his head when a fist burst between his eyes. Uh, in Brooklyn, this would cause men to, and boys to slap the table with glee. This might be the only heavenly light we'd ever see. Um, so the father's asking about stars, but he's talking about getting hit in the face, right? So we might think about uh, what that is going to mean here. Then we can talk about, I never saw stars, about what's happening um, for him in, uh, in Brooklyn. Uh, but it down here says, my son can see stars through the telescope. Uh, and so what is it that we mean, what is it that those stars end up representing about this father, son, and grandson? What is it we want to say about all that? Uh, and so, again, be thinking about that, asking any uh, potential questions that you have. Uh, and then the last poem, uh, what it's like to be a black girl, for those of you who aren't. Again, the others um, deal with, uh, in some ways, more immigrant stories. But as we said, um, 
And this course, we're not only talking about uh, people who are recent immigrants, but also people who are native born to the United States, but may feel that their culture is not fully represented here. Uh, and so that's what we have is something with what it's like to be a black girl for those of you who aren't. Um, and I want to, you know, again, go through this and think about things that uh, literally don't seem to make sense. First of all, it's being nine years old and feeling not, like you're not finished. But what does that mean to not be finished as a person? I mean, you can't really be not finished as a person. Um, uh, you can, might be little, right? Uh, that is, when you're born, um, you're just uh, small. It doesn't mean you're not fit. That, you know, that baby's not quite finished yet. That doesn't make any sense. Um, but uh, um, so that's, uh, again, things that don't make sense to us are actually metaphors. So uh, be thinking about um, what these uh, metaphors are and how it is that they help us understand something about what's ultimately going on in here. Um, uh, she's going to be talking about things like primping in front of mirrors that deny your reflection. What does that mean? Can a mirror deny your reflection? You might think about that. Um, uh, um, uh, finding a disturbance in your chest. What does it mean to have a disturbance in your chest? What kind of uh, disturbance uh, do we seem to be talking about? Um, and so be thinking about uh, some of those things. And again, you can ask any kinds of questions that you want um, in the uh, in the discussion boards. Make sure you're doing that, asking the questions, responding back to those questions. Again, I do not expect you to understand everything that's going on in the poem, right? Um, I, I do want you to try, though. Uh, to come up with something and just see what you come up with. We will later sort out some other things and you'll be prepared for writing about it. But for now, I just kind of want to, you to uh, get into the poem and kind of play around. So those are the poems that you'll be reading and those are the discussion boards you're going to be posting to. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, just let me know.